Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse number 1, the Bible says, and I read from King James, of course, and I'll go, as I go through the, through the course, I may go back and forth to NLT, but the Bible says, and David said, is there yet any that is left? of the house of Saul that I may show your Bible's reading something like that y'all sure all right he says is there anybody left and then he says now watch this I love this he says this because what I want to do uh, elders that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake and there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba and when they had called him out David unto David the king said unto him art thou Ziba and he said thy servant is he and the king said is there yet or is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, there's a dialogue between uh, Ziba and David. And so, so now Ziba's talking to David and he says, behold, he is in the house of one, one translation call, is called Micar, the son of Amuel in Lodabar. The king David, then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Micah, the son of Amuel from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence and David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold, thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake. And I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table sometime continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant? that thou should have looked upon such a dead dog as I. Then the king called to Ziba. Hey, Ziba, Saul's servant, he's talking, said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread all way at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons. And twenty servants. 
Then Ziba said unto the king, talking to David, according to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem. For he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. Certainly you have read the entire chapter of 2 Samuel chapter 9. And I'll come back and try to unpackage what you have just heard. But certainly with your prayers and the aid of the Holy Spirit, today I want to talk about thanking God for a second chance yes yeah, son I thank him for a second chance look at somebody next to you and say that's a reason to praise him right there you may be seated in the presence of a great king my brothers and my sisters, what I've come to understand is that many people fail to appreciate second opportunities. It is amazing to me how uh, we'll factor in some great things for other people. And uh, it seems as though we are willing to help everybody else and give them a second chance. But Deacon, when it comes down to someone allowing you the opportunity to be the recipient of a second chance, it's very difficult because um, the one who you gave a second chance to oftentimes forget. Uh, okay, you can sit there. Uh, like I ain't talking to you if you want to. That, that, that let me know I'm talking directly to you. Uh, because uh, 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 you know uh, what it felt like when somebody embraced you. For, okay, 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 let me, y'all gonna make me work? Okay, I, I come to work here today, so let me work a little bit. You, you remember when uh, you, 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 you liked somebody and, 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 and you were in a relationship with them and, and, and then uh, it didn't work itself out and, and because it didn't work out, uh, some time and space had elapsed and then all of a sudden you stumbled across them a second time and, and then uh, uh, something about your relationship may have been rekindled uh, and, and you were very excited about a second chance. Okay, well, some of you don't know nothing about relationships then. Have you ever worked for a company uh, uh, that you thought that you would never have to cross the bridge to work for again, but somehow or other, Sister Jenkins, thank you for being my amen, uh, uh, you found yourself having to cross that bridge one more time. Why? Because uh, uh, somehow you left California and, 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 and being led of your husband, you moved to Detroit, Michigan, walked away from the government's job to follow your husband, get to Detroit, Michigan, stay there approximately three years or so, and then find yourself being rerouted back to California. Thank God you didn't burn the bridge that you had three years prior, and now that you're back in California, you can go right back to that same government job and tell them I'm back in the state of California will you rehire me thanking God for a okay some of you don't identify with that what about those of us who say you were saved 
Thank you, Mama Chris. I, I'm trying to find the right crowd to preach to. They, they, they ain't saying nothing, so you caught my attention here. What about the fact when we gave Jesus our, our heart and the preacher our hand and thought we was heaven bound and all of a sudden the proclivities of life had us backsliding, had us doing the back stroke and we found ourselves doing things we thought and said that we would never do again in our lives and yet somehow daughter somehow on this day of July we found ourselves gamble right back in the house of God thanking him for a second chance. My brothers and my sisters, the text today focuses on two main characters, David and Mephibosheth. You must understand, dear hearts, that Mephibosheth is the grandson of Saul. You do know who Saul is, don't you? Well, Saul was the first king of Israel not that he was God's choice but he was the people's choice and you do know that uh, uh, Saul thought he was the man uh, uh, yes he did he 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 thought that he was bad and God had to remind him uh, uh brother Saul you 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 know you 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 were small in your own eyes and here it was, it was me that made you king. And, and now after I made you king, you think you the stuff now. Okay, some of y'all act like you can't feel it, but I, 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 I sense your spirit in here too. You, you, you know, you, you, you got a little something now and can't nobody tell you nothing. You know, you, 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 you can't even come to church no more. You, 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 you drive right past the church now because, you know, you, you, you arrived. And some folks, they stuck because they, they, they don't want to give God a second chance, but, but, but they're going to find themselves having to give him a second chance because what does it profit a man? Lord, I'm trying to preach here. Y'all might as well take the brakes off of me. Jamed, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and die and lose his soul? And so Saul, Saul was the one that, uh, you know, had an evil spirit on him. It was, it was that particular Saul who had a son by the name of Jonathan. And the Bible declares that David, amen, you know, was uh, the little shepherd boy. Yeah, but, but somehow, some way, uh, David and Jonathan, they became best buddies. Yeah, and, and because they were best buddies, uh, you know, and, and, and the funny thing about it, it was that same David here uh, that is reminded of what he made a vow to his best friend about. It's interesting to me because after doing further research, I've come to understand that this uh, conversation between Jonathan and David it goes unnoted it goes undocumented we don't know when he made that vow we don't know why he made that vow it was just two boys you know that had an oath amongst each other and said man if I die before you die man I'm going to take care of your family and, and, and Jonathan looks at David and said yeah if vice versa because you know my daddy tried to kill you over 23 times and just in case he becomes successful and take you out of here I want you to know Dave I got you but, it, but, but, but my brothers and sisters th this story here is a story uh, about distress that is experienced watch this now that is caused by change. Walk with me, if you will, my brothers and sisters. It is a story about a, an invitation that was agreed upon and accepted. This story is about friendship. This story is about promises. This story is about grace. This story is about love. 
This story is about compassion. This story is about forgiveness. This story is a story about hope. My brothers and sisters, I know y'all ain't saying nothing because you can't see yourself yet in the text. But if you wake up and walk with me, you're going you to find yourself kissing the text in just a moment. So seldom in the profile that is readily available to us today, do we seek such kindness? Why? Because you don't know David like this. David is generally thought of as a little shepherd boy who slew the giant. Or you know David as him committing adultery with that bad woman called Bad Bathsheba. You know David as running from Saul. We remember him for being a man after God's own heart. You, you may remember him, Mother Chris, because he relocated the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. Somebody else may know him because he's known for having many wives. Somebody else may know him because he had family problems. I mean big family problems. Help me, Elder Demetrius. He had major family problems between his two sons, you know, or his sons find themselves sleeping with his daughters. I ain't got no help here. We find this, this David in this friendship with Jonathan that brings to our attention today. My question to God is why would I preach a message like this in 2023? And this is what he told me. He said, because many folks don't value friendship anymore. No one is loyal. No one values genuineness. Because earlier in Samuel, we see a very beautiful friendship. And you'll find that in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. For you that are taking notes, you'll find the relationship between Jonathan and David in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. Say amen if you got it. We know that they were close because the scripture gives us to know that they loved each other as if they were their own blood brothers. David and Jonathan had a bond together, Elder Denise, uh, and were very loyal to one another in spite of uh, 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 how Saul, Jonathan's father, felt about David. David and Jonathan had made a covenant uh, between each other of friendship and they made a promise to each other that whoever survived and outlived each other, I told you that in the beginning, that they would stick by each other and support the other the other's family have I got a witness but my brothers and sisters this 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 incident certainly stands as a challenge uh, brother Kevin for many of us today because how we operate pastor Sean with our friends and what kind of promises we've made those kept and those broken it is also a challenge to honor the promise that we made to our own parents. Some made promises to their grandparents and descendants to those who reflect how we also keep our promises to God. We certainly uh, 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 are living in a time where all relationships are what I call suspect. But Gerald, I wish I had some help here today. Uh, all relationships are suspect. Uh huh. I, I may be sleeping with uh, one eye closed, but I got my other eye watching you. Suspect. 
Sad to say, but I can't invite everybody over to my house because I don't know if you're going to be a private hater or a public congratulator. You, it, it just, it's just, you know, some of us leave our nice whip in the garage because if we bring it out and drive it, we don't know if you're hating so bad where well, you're going to put your key or your rock and scratch it because you don't like the way God is blessing me. And truth of the matter is you trying to keep up with me and I ain't thinking about you but because you 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 but Gerald help me here I'm out here now you got to pray me through this son we, 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 we're checking Jah who, who 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 really is our we called him our homie who, who, who's really my my dog who really got my back so these two brothers, these boys were very close. And if you have a friend, it's, it, it, it seems like, truthfully, and I'm, I'm going to say this now and get out of here. It seems like it's hard, I got your attention now, to gauge who my true friends are. Dr. Sean, I always say I, I may lose a few here. But it's hard because Mother Grace, when God starts opening the windows of heaven, pouring you out blessings, elder that I don't have room enough to receive it. Why is it that now all of a sudden The phone call stop. All of a sudden, going to lunch stops. All of a sudden, the calls stop. And then all of a sudden, they just say, "Man, you know, uh, uh, you know, we we just because we don't talk every day, you still my boy." Then that's why I don't know what's wrong with a lot of you. A lot of you are weird to me. Son, you're going to pray me through this here. Because too many of y'all tell all your business on Facebook. I told y'all I was going to lose a few friends right there. Yeah, Faith, every time they get a little this, they're going to post it on Facebook. Some things you just ought to keep to yourself. What I've learned is if I keep the door closed, you ain't got to worry about what's behind the door. Y'all ain't talking to me here. You can wonder about it all day long, but if I don't give you the opportunity to peek inside, you'll never go inside. Y'all, they ain't saying nothing, Heinz. The problem with many of y'all is you tell too much of your business. Give time to get something new. Told my children very, very young, don't y'all post nothing, don't, don't, don't y'all put my house on no Facebook. I don't care if that is your bedroom. They, ain't, they, they don't need to know what goes on in nobody's bedroom around here. This is not the public's information. If they don't live in this house, they don't need to know what go on in this house. Don't go sending no pictures about you standing in front of the mirror, blowing kisses and all that old foolishness. No, sir, Baba Junior. Don't go taking nothing about my plate, about my food, about nothing going on up in here. Because it ain't none of y'all's business what I do. Overseer, I told you I'm going to lose a few friends here. I mean, folks get their nails done on Facebook. Got some old nasty, crusty feet and finally got them things worked on and you, you can't wait to throw them on Facebook. Got a half-weave job done and sitting up that thing because it looked better than what you had before. You just smiling. You, 
you put that out there for me to see. I didn't ask you to see you with your half made up weave in your head. You threw all that out there. You put your business out there. Don't be looking at me like I'm crazy. Y'all did that, not me. And now, so many of y'all got to use filters. Y'all know, y'all know, yeah, faith, they know what I'm talking about. They don't know what I'm talking about. Knowing good and well. But Gerald, you know what I'm talking about. Looking like a diamond on the Facebook. I'm going to back up out of here now. Let me get back to David and Mephibosheth. And when I see you in person, I'm like, saying is you ain't got to doctor it up if it's really you honey let it be you show them the real you I pray for many of y'all they trying to get a second chance <laughs> I understand I got it I got it I got it I'm praying for y'all I'm praying for y'all at any rate, this is a time of what I call much turmoil. And let me say this too. Stop being a fake friend. I thought I had some real... See, my, 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 my millennials are clapping right here. Uh, one thing they don't want, they don't want no fake folks. It's funny because, because you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, uh, just tell them the truth. That don't look good on you. That ain't your color. You, you know, yeah, you know, I, 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 what, what, what really be getting me a lot of times, and I, and I got to really get up out of here, is y'all know, y'all know you, you, stuff that y'all posting, you, you know that stuff too small for you, that's for, fuss, that's for a little skinny somebody, you, you, you trying to put a, put, you know, you trying to put all your glory in that little old outfit thinking it's going to look the same like it did on the poster that you saw, honey, you know you can't fit that, stop playing games. You ain't attracting nobody. You running somebody away. Any good man. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm gone. Just, what, what, what you saying, Apostle? Friendship is built up on truth. Elder, you better pray for me now. Why? Because, you know, if you don't know how to wear makeup, you know, I, I may get in trouble right here. You better be praying for me, girl. Don't be talking about you got to go to work on me yet. You better pray me through this here. You know, folks still using the black pencil on the lip with a bright pink lipstick. Or they using lipstick for eyeshadow. Lord help me, Chavis. They got looking like clowns. And y'all walking out, oh girl, you look good. Tell them. The truth. Daughter, you know I'm telling the truth. And then when y'all see him, first thing, you, <laughs> ooh, hi, 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 
How y'all done? Ooh. No, you pull her to the side and say, listen here, girl. I don't know what you was thinking about this morning when you left that house. But before we hang out with each other, we finna make a pit stop into this restroom and you finna wipe all that off your face because you ain't got it right right there. A friend will do that for you. A friend will do that for you. A friend will do that for you. you. They'll tell you the truth. A friend will tell you, hey, 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 uh, your slip is hanging. A friend will tell you, hey, come here, hey, take this. In. They won't just sit there and let you keep talking and you know you got something hanging out your nose. A friend will tell you, well, hey, 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 kind brother, hey, hey, step to the side, man. Well, I don't want to embarrass him. No, no. You embarrassing me by standing in front of me looking the way you looking and you're insulting the... Oh, y'all ain't going to be real. I thought I had a real church here. So, when you know somebody, be real with them. This is the type of relationship David had with Jonathan. I know my daddy want to kill you. But you ain't done nothing to me. And I promise I'm going to move on. But y'all better stop this Hatfield and McCoy stuff too. Thank you for the one hand clap. That's generational bitterness to the fifth and sixth generation. We wasn't even there when it happened. And just because every time a kid, don't you hang out with that family? We don't even know why we don't like them. But just because Big Mama in the fifth generation didn't like, and, and y'all sitting up here, no, I can't talk to them. What happened? Don't nobody know. They just don't want you to talk to them. But don't let it be an attraction between the two. David had a bad combo. Because not only was he Jonathan's best friend, but he was also the son-in-law to Saul. Because David also married Saul's daughter. He got hurt when he, he beat the, 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 the uncircumcised Philistine. That was the covenant that Saul said he would give to whoever take out the giant. So now my father-in-law don't like me. I'm married to his daughter. And his son is my best friend. That's a bad combo there. You better help me, son. That's a bad combo there. And some of you, 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 you keep mess going so much to where, you know, if, if, if Nasha have a problem with, with me, Samoya, which is Nasha's sister, ro rolling her eyes at me like I got a problem with Samoya. And Samoya don't know why me and Nasha beefing. She just know that Nasha said she got a problem with Campbell. And now all y'all running around here looking at each other beefing. And you don't even know what you're beefing for. And a true friend will bring both of you together. Y'all ain't talking to me now. And say, we're going to sit ourselves down right here and we're going to work this out because we can't be beefing with each other. Can I get some real amen somewhere? Many of you can't say amen because you want to keep the foolishness going. God is tired of that type of relationship. 
I'm not not liking you and I don't know why I'm not supposed to like you. Somebody better get to talking around here why I'm not supposed to like you. Because if you don't open up your mouth just because they offended you, that didn't offend me. And then I want to know why did they feel that comfortable around you to offend you? Maybe because you didn't set no boundaries with him. And they don't disrespect me like they disrespect you. So I ain't got to stop cutting relationship with them because they don't do me like that. Now I'm not talking to y'all who what would they would say knee high to a duck. In other words, I'm not talking to y'all that's still under your mother's and father's roof. I know how y'all go back and try to turn my message around against me to your parents and say, see, you don't know that boy. That, that boy love me. That boy don't love you. I see something in him. I told my daughter that once before. She comes showing me a picture. I said, get rid of him. She said, buy a picture, daddy. I said, I know it when I see it. And I promise you, he better not show up at my house. Now, 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 watch this now. I had to tell her why. How did you know just by looking at the picture? Because that picture looked like me one day. What you mean, daddy? I can tell he a flirt. He a, I, I see it. That was me, baby. And he ain't going to treat you right because he can't treat himself right. I don't care about y'all looking at me crazy this morning. You don't know what's best for you. You're only 14, 15 years, 16 years old. You ain't lived long enough to know a demon when you see him. A demon is slithery. Cunning and crafty. He gonna tell you what you wanna hear. Save you some crying days. Because we coined that phrase years ago. Y'all want me to tell you what we coined? I'm not responsible of the pain of the people that ignore my counsel. So you grown? You go out there? You ignore my counsel? Deal with your consequence. I don't feel no conviction. I don't feel bad. I ain't helping you. I told you not to go in the first place. I don't feel convicted to help you. I am not responsible for the pain of the people that ignored my counsel. Will y'all say amen to me? It's chaotic. We came out of parenting class where now Overseer lets us know that parents only spend approximately 14 minutes in a day with their children. But they'll go to school from six to eight hours. And when you have no time for your children, you're telling the world to raise your children. And when you give your child that cell phone, I know I'm not going to get no amen right there. I don't care. Mine, when, I, when, I, when mine lived in my house, brother son here, they didn't get no television in their room. You come out and watch TV in the family room. And at a certain time, that TV going off and you going on in the bedroom. Y'all ain't talking to me nice now. Cell phones at the age of three. They know how to hold a cell phone before they know how to hold a bottle. When I grew up, we stopped crying when we got a bottle. 
Now your kids stop crying when they get a cell phone. I don't understand, Travis. I, I, I'm trying to figure this out now. How is it that your three-year-old know how to work a cell phone better than a 30-year-old? And you wonder why they don't know how to communicate. Because for 90% of that day, Nina, they got something talking to them. So when it comes to communication, they don't have no dialogue. They don't know how to go to a job interview and present themselves. They show up with their pants hanging off their rump, with their dungarees showing. Y'all ain't talking to me now. What old dirty white t-shirt on. What's up? Holler at you, boy. Wait a minute. You saying all the wrong things when you see me. So because we try to teach your kids, when you go to an interview, you wear a shirt and tie. And if you don't have one, we'll get you one. We try to help you by bringing your kid to a mock interview so that we can help you answer difficult questions so don't you don't get so mad because they ask you well what do you think you can provide to this company Psh, I'm out of here I don't know what I can provide nobody don't even think about providing nothing to nobody I just need a job so are you not hireable Everybody is not going to be successful playing basketball. Everybody is not going to be successful becoming an entertainer. Some of you got to be creative enough to start your own business. Some of you got to be creative enough to get out and do something for yourself and stop looking for somebody to hand it to you. Lord, I wish I had a real church in here. raising kids nowadays everything they want you hand it to them I see why some of you didn't show up to the parent class because you don't want to be told the truth it's the truth that'll make you free how you gonna get mad at me when your room is not clean when the dishes has been in the sink all week and because it's Friday night you want to go pair new Jordans and you think I'm supposed to buy it for you. Y'all crazy. The kid don't have the problem. The kid don't got the problem. Y'all got the problem. Because y'all don't do no follow through. That's what we learned Friday night. Oh, oh they, they thought they were going to get away from parenting class, but I, I, I'm, I'm bringing it back up in here today. That's why I got this message right here. Brother Joe, you ought to say amen. You know you heard this on Friday night. Parents lack follow through. <laughs> then little Jimmy ain't been to church in 13 years. Now all of a sudden he in trouble with Mr. Johnny Law. Well, can y'all, can y'all, can, can you call your, your, your team together and talk? And I ain't talking to nobody. That boy don't even know my name. Let's know until I'm talking to somebody. Why is it that you run the church when you get in trouble? God is not just a God deacon of trouble. He's a God also. You can run to him when you don't need nothing. But just say, Lord, I thank you. I was somebody would nudge somebody and tell them to wake up and say amen to the man of God. We in here trying to live purposeful and productive lives. And you're wondering why it's not working. It's not because the system has not been in place. It's because you failed to be purposeful and productive. Thank you, John Med. And the reason why some folk 
fail to be purposeful and productive is because you got to put work in. Lord, I wish I had to help here, man. How you expect your company to be number one if you ain't put no work in? You can't sleep to the crack of dawn and trying to expand the business. No, you got to get up early bird, get the worm, honey. And the worst thing that you want to hear is, you know what, man, five minutes ago, I just signed a deal with somebody. Five, whoa, whoa, whoa. When all you had to do was get up, get out, and do something. I want y'all to type that right there if you're watching me right now at home. Get up, get out, and do. Matter of fact, do me a favor. Look at your neighbor. You ain't talked to your neighbor all day. Look at him real good and say, get up, get out, and do something. Maybe I didn't made the folk mad in the television world because ain't nobody typing nothing down now. I know how I get when folk get to hear messages like this here. Hines, they don't like truth. This ministry would never be built on lies. I don't care who you are. Male, female, son or daughter. Family, friend or foe. The truth outruns a lie any day. Y'all ain't clapping now. Tell me the truth. I don't want to be with you. You just my friend. Tell me the truth. I can't see us doing the happy, happy. Tell me the truth. When I see you, you make me sick. Especially if I ain't married to you. Honey, tell me the truth. Y'all ain't talking to me today. Mother Grice, Mother Grice, thank you, Mother. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, Mother Grice. Thank you. I'm back in this story now because y'all can't handle no more. Thank you, daughter. I appreciate you. She said, I ain't never left it. I, I think I left it either. Is it? Watch this. Now, what has happened is that we have a problem. Because when Mephibosheth was born, he was not born crippled. Okay, uh, this is a Bible teaching. Go, go, go over to 2 Samuel chapter 4 real quick, please, please, please. And I want you to look at verse number 4. I wish y'all say amen to me. I know, I know I'm a little long-winded today, but you'll be all right. Here it is. You see verse 4? 2 Samuel 4 and 4. And Jonathan's Saul's son, they want to know who, who, who Jonathan is. That's Saul's son. Had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old. When the what? Tiding came of what? And what? Out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up. And ran or fled. And it came to pass as she made haste to flee. That he fell. And became lame. And his name was. I'm trying to help you see where I'm going here. but the, So he wasn't born that way. He wasn't born that way. Now watch what it says. You got to understand, he was not born. Say amen to this. Amen. Now, what was happening was, we find that there was problems going on in the city. The nurse responds to what she heard. While she's fleeing and running, she trips and falls. 
And when she fell, it so happened to mess Mephibosheth up. And now he's crippled. And, and the cold part about this now, because you got to understand the reason why she was running. Because nobody just runs for no reason. I, I hope you don't. Now what you got to understand, though, is that at this particular time, the turmoil comes in because Saul now, he failed as king. And as the first king, now here come David being his replacement. Now at the, this time, Jonathan and Saul, they both die on the same day in the battle on Mount Gilboa. Now Mephibosheth is only five years old. At the time when his father dies and his grandfather dies. They died on the same day. Now all of a sudden, he ain't got nobody. So now you got the daddy dead, granddaddy dead, uncles are dead, and now here I am crippled. And you think your situation bad. Yours ain't that bad. Can you imagine burying everybody on the same day and you can't even be there because you got to wait for somebody to carry you there and you cripple? And the cold part about it now, you're an orphanage. You five years old. Who going to take care of you at five years old? And you cripple. You complaining because your water was turned off. You complaining because you ain't got no crest toothpaste. And here this boy is, five years old. Man, how old are you? Okay, he was four years older. You four years older than him. Can you imagine the trauma? Of growing up, my granddaddy gone, daddy gone, uncles are gone, and this woman didn't drop me, and now I ain't got nobody to help me. Now I got you where I want you as I hasten now. Now he's subject to persecution. He's subject to slander. But all of a sudden, in due time, God will send him a rescuer. Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you are blessed by the message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. Or if you would like to order this message in its entirety, please go to our website at www.sbfaithcity.org and there you can sign up to partner with us for the Gathering of the Eagles where you receive all the messages in their entirety for Wednesday and Sunday. I promise you won't be disappointed. But remember, here at Showers of Blessings, we want you to be blessed.